We're going to throw our hat in on the arid dust hole known as Panjang. The real Panjang this time, not that fake one the last time. Which, you know, that actually explains a lot. Hot, barren, and uh, Arby's not to be seen for light years. Panjang is now a hot, barren world that the administrator had changed from the last campaign. Too bad I didn't catch that until after I did the narration. Nonetheless, we're going to send Alpha Cluster over there to knock heads and see if we can make a name for ourselves. Since the terrain is mostly going to be an open desert, I'm taking a Bane C, Grindel, Vixen, Locust, you know, the usual fast movers, hopefully, to take advantage of really open firing lanes. Meanwhile, my opponent and relative newcomer to the group is taking a representative force from the Inner Sphere, from the Davians, no less. Some of you in the know might have heard a rumor that there is some sort of secret cabal that is actually manipulating the campaign map. Some sort of legion of cheaty tech evil schemes or some such. Well, I'm here to tell you that, yeah, it does exist. There's a bunch of clan players that we've gotten together to help manipulate the board. And while some people have subjected some sort of conjecture that it's some sort of evil Illuminati-style plot, well, it's much less that than it is, well, yeah. In this skirmish at Panjang, we're actually fighting over the hills of Nakhon, if I recall correctly, and we are going to make a minor brushing incident, and we're going to try to see if we can't test his ability to handle himself on the field of battle. Because like I said, the guy's uh, new, he's uh, actually very friendly, and we hope that we can see him in more games in the future. I begin with the usual opening gambit of putting the light units on the southern end of the board while the heavier units sit at the top right of the board. Anchored by the Vulture C and the Bane 3, we're going to put the heavier elements over there, hit things at long range while we let the lighter assets, the Locust, the Grindel with the infantry hanging on to it, and his other buddy the Vixen, to run balls out just as fast as they can. We're going to try to swing by the inner sphere lines on the left side of the board and see if we can't disrupt his formation. We want to try to keep his forces separated and distributed as much as possible. And as he begins moving in response, he takes long range shots, often running when he should be walking. As you can see, the awesome is moving up, getting closer closer to the lighter Jade Falcon assets, but he can't necessarily see them. So I start anchoring all the Jade Falcon assets behind the hill. We're getting in close, not the highest movement mod that we can get, but we got the rocks to protect us for this turn. Meanwhile, on the northern end of the board, his Jaeger mech begins charging through the opening, finding any target that he can. As the Bane 3 kind of jockeys for position out there, I'm not really committing it towards the center, and I'm not committing it onto the north side of the board. Wherever that assault goes, it's going to end up staying there until it's either destroyed or it's killed everything in front of it. And as a challenge to the Vulture and the Bane, the Commando and Spider begins leaping and moving through all the rocky outcroppings and escarpments on the northern end of the board, taking shots wildly into the Vulture, seeing what they can tag. But as a good pl clan player should always try to do, his mods are usually hitting on 10s and 11s, whereas the clan, or at least Jade Falcon, is currently leveling their guns on uh, 8 plus, pretty typically. Even at this range, we're, we're getting good, favorable mods, which is disproportionately better at 8 plus versus 10. This presumably cross dressing president has a tank named after him. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, I don't know much about the rumors, but it is hilarious. A lot of the old TROs have subtle and jokes like this one. Super classy. The Gambit is in play as he begins moving more and more of his forces on the northern end of the board. We, I am forced to start doing what I can to compensate for that. I'm not going to engage him directly. Again, I want to keep those mods as high as possible for the clan. So Jade Falcon's going to start pulling back as the Vulture begins punching in a reverse, backing up behind the hills, backing up into the Bane, trying to bait the Jaeger mech to run forward. He does. The Commando chases after him. The Spider's going to leap over the hills and crash into the opening as well. And that's when it happens. I've got full line of sight to everything from the Bane, so he's just going to park his feet into the ground, dig in, and he's going to start taking long-range shots at the oncoming invaders. 
And in a classic blunder, the awesome on the southern end of the board moves early in his initiative step and it allows the Jade Falcon light assets to swarm around him. This is a poor decision that I would implore anybody else in the same situation to try to at least rethink as the assault is now swarmed over with units just by pushing him too early in the initiative steps. His quick draw on Jenner tries to compensate as well as the catapult with its twin LBXs, but again, he's often running and jumping in turns in which he should be able to anticipate being able to return fire at, and he doesn't. And I take advantage of that, moving as fast as I can. Again, we got to keep the two hit mods on the Jade Falcon mechs as high as possible, so the light assets gun it dusting up the ground, grabbing into the dirt, and just hauling ass, trying to make them as vacant a target as possible. Again, his two hit mods are often seeing around 10, 11, even though they're this close. It's great. Now, as a clan player, I would definitely not recommend getting this darn close, but again, he moved everything way too quickly, too high of run mods, too high jump mods, and it's relatively safe to get this close if you think you're not going to get hit that hard. And hit hard he is as the awesome manages to take several hits into the back. One of them cores through, causes a critical. Of course, nothing comes of it. I mean, it's, a, it's an awesome. Meanwhile, the Bane and Vulture manage to peel off all the armor on the Jaeger mech literally tearing off the armor on nearly every section. He survives, miraculously, with a plus three PSR, manages to land on his back, dealing a little bit of damage, but he manages to brush himself off. All things told, getting hit by a clan heavy and assault at this range, he should just count his lucky stars that he didn't die. Now the situation has been firmly isolated into two distinct combat areas. On the northern end you have the Jade Falcon Bane 3 and Vulture tagging along against a Jaeger mech, a Spider, and a Commando. It is an equitable exchange, but like I mentioned before, the light assets can't afford to sit around at close range with all those inner sphere heavies and assaults. So they are going to book it. They are not going to stick around. They are going to again throttle up the reactor and try to flee away. Vixen immediately makes a dash for it. Awesome turns around to try to respond and at least protect its rear assets, but he doesn't read the initiative step quite as well as he probably could, and the awesome begins backing up trying to protect himself while the rest of the clan assets are already painting a picture of hit and run. The damage that could be done really has been done. They didn't manage to take anything down. Granted, they were trying to take on an awesome, which has a lot of durability, but we just can't afford to sit there and make a slugging match when we have maneuverability on our side. As such, my buddy begins responding as best he can as the Davian guards begin turning around and trying to respond with their lighter assets, doing a little bit of movement blocking, which is a really great idea in this particular case with the commando and sticking up the quick draw to try to move over there and take it on as the spider diverts a little to try to take on the vixen that is hauling paint all the way out there. I have to really admit, at this point, my buddy is really picking up the game, and he is starting to use effective ranges and slowing things down when he decides to actually shoot instead of running and jumping every turn and perhaps underestimating the speed of some of the clan assets. The Bane 3 continues to load all kinds of fire into that Jaeger mech. Again, that 8 LRM-15s is just awesome, and it manages to peel off more armor, cause several crits, takes a leg off and puts it down as the Vulture disregards him and tries to support the Vixen that is coming to support them. Again, at this point, Jade Falcon has got blood in the water, and we're going to take on the slower assets that are taking on the assaults for a few turns before we can turn around and take on the other responding assets. My buddy really can't make anything hit on the south side of the board, and it's not for a lack of trying. I am doing everything I can to duck, dodge, dip, and dive all my way out of there, because everything is going to fire at the Grendel there that is jumping away. I decided to go ahead and not move the full distance that he possibly could, just so he can get another shot back with that ER large laser. Maybe we can get lucky with a shot, but it ends up not. Meanwhile, in the center of the board, as the Vixen is desperately trying to get to his friends, he gets pinned in between the Commando and the Spider as he gets railed in from one side and the other as they hit him over and over again. And mostly miss, but some of the SRMs hit through armor criticals, takes the gyro hit into the Vixen. Oh, that, that hurts. He's otherwise perfectly fine. He savages the Commando in response, but doesn't manage to put it down. 
And as we move into the next turn, I accidentally forget that we have a PSR coming, not just from the physicals that were incurred in that turn, but because of the gyro hit. And I go ahead and back it up. You know, you always got to be a sportsman first, though, to be honest, I quite thought, hey, I could just let this fly, right? I can just forget about this. But no, I'm a good sport, if anything, or at least I try to be. The mantra is there. And he makes the gyro roll. He fails. Goes to a through armor critical, go center torso, hits the MGMO, boom! And there it goes, the Vixen dies. The only kill thus far is done by myself through a failed piloting skill roll into the ground, killing the mech. Moving on, the Bane moves up forward. I decide to go for a reasonable chance at hitting him instead of running forward and kicking the fallen Jaeger mech in front of him. I decide to go ahead and just walk forward and just load more LRMs into him, hope to kill him. While the responding assets from the Davians begin swarming over as the Commando and Spider begin making their presence felt again, trying to help their Jaeger mech ally as the Vulture doesn't have a whole lot of room to maneuver and starts lugging those thunderous bowling balls at a fraction of the speed of light at relatively close ranges. Still, this is a match that can definitely be won for Jade Falcon. As we begin gritting our teeth, we wait for the responding light assets to again isolate the slower inner sphere forces that have found themselves at gun to gun range. I mean, we're, we're over the iron sights over here on the other side of the board. But at this point, it's the tyranny of time that is actually hosing us in, because at this point, we're running this game on a Sunday at the game shop, and they close early. So this is kind of a problem when you run over a clan list and these kinds of things, because whoever tends to lose their stuff first, and it's not uncommon to be a clan player. He's going to lose a greater BV of his stuff. But this is a great exchange for us at this range. It's something that we could definitely win, but it doesn't look like time is going to be on our side. I make the shots that I can. We absolutely eviscerate the commando, but for some reason he still lives. And as I'm going for glory, splitting all my fire amongst different targets, not even the Jaeger mech manages to die this turn. It's still technically around. It only has like part of a torso and half of its criticals left, but it's not even technically enforced withdrawal yet. It's crazy. And that's where we have to leave the game, with Jade Falcon assets on the northern side of the board, absolutely owning the local tactical space, there's just no ability to do enough damage to actually put anything else down. There's only one unit that's technically destroyed, it is a Jade Falcon unit, and that's enough to call the game for him. Roughly 2,000 ABV destroyed by my own dice. Awesome. Well, I might have been a little harsh on him, but he's he learned a lot in this game, and he got an honest victory out of it. This is Battletech at its core. So this has been an Ouchie's Bat Rep, and thanks for watching. And for those of you that are wondering, the campaign's going great as the Jade Falcon Expeditionary has managed to pull itself in as the number two leader with the other member of the Cheaty Tech League of Evil Schemes or something. Clocking in as the number one spot. It's none other than Deffler. We'll see how long this alliance works. Isn't that three crits now? Uh, low fuck, that's the one you wanted. What'd that do? That was ammo. Just, is that just going to be like this? Yeah, just for the, the cheap proof explosion. Is it? There's no case there or anything? It doesn't matter. It's a center of bullshit. Oh, there it might be. I mean, you can just put the next on your body. There you go. Congratulations on your fir the first kill on the board. It is the first kill on the board. I got a kill. <clears throat> How much BB is that? Not uh, much. Uh, well, no, it's a lot. It's like 1,400. Really? Thank you. For the Vic? I would like to point out, though, because I'm salty, that uh, I had to kill it myself. Uh, after, I, <laughs> after I made sure you were on the ground, then it's like, yeah, come on, bitch, get the fuck up. But damn right, you shouldn't get the fuck and up. And you remember when you fill out the uh, sportsmanship score? You remember. Remember, the only reason he fell down and he took this damage is because I remember to do the gyro roll after we were after. You're getting a 10 right now. And as long as you don't mind the cursing, I, I, I agree. Uh, that's fine.